Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor <clears throat> and my son, <clears throat> my oldest son, who is a total meathead, he's into weightlifting big time. He's also a lefty pitcher. He's been begging me to go work out with him. Uh, I have never, when I was growing up, I was a runner. I've, I've never like worked out real, I mean, I, when I was a kid, we did some, but not like I was never a guy that was like lifting weights. That wasn't what I did. I was a runner. But he was begging me to go to the gym. So I did yesterday. And I took it very easy because I know what it can feel like if you try to overdo it for the first time. And he told me that, that, uh, that if I gave him a month that he would get me in fighting shape. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be doing any fighting. But um, he, he told me that he was going to show me how to lift weights. I said, I'll give you a month to do that. So after this video, I've got to go uh, lift weights again. And I got to try my best not to get too sore tomorrow so that I can do it again. So I'm going to do it for the month. I told him I'd give him a month and um, uh, give it a whirl. So we shall see. Um, now link to um, who is my sponsor they have they I looked and I, I can't show you the page because it shows prices and stuff and I, and I can't show those but um, they are doing these bundles now on link to and they've gotten really popular currently there's a bundle what they do is they package three different private equities and there's an in the bundles and it's like a total of seventy five hundred dollars and they when you make the purchase it splits it evenly amongst those two issues. Today the bundle had, I saw Circle, Stripe, and there was one other, I'm forgetting what it is. But go check these out because they're, they don't keep them up there all the time. You have to catch them while it's hot. Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to show you this and then I'm gonna make a point and then I'm gonna show you what's really going on. First thing I'm gonna show you is Anthony. Well, you know what? First I'm gonna show you this. This was uh, Truth Lab, Boring Sleuth put this out last night. He says, is having more comments than likes the number one sign an account is most likely being botted to appear important and popular? Now, I've talked about this a lot, but I think it's extremely significant. Nobody really talks about it in this space. I can tell you for, I'm, I'm not, I won't name names, but I can tell you for a fact that in crypto, not, well, I mean, we know it's done in traditional media, but someone has, has duplicated the plan in crypto and they've done one of two or a combination of things. They've either co taken people who have gotten popular in social media and co-opted them. I don't know if they're paying them. I don't know how it works. Or, and I think this is even more common, they literally cr created personalities in crypto, put them out there when they're really working on behalf of these people carrying their narrative and there's no question that this is what the majority of crypto social media is not a question in the world L look no further than the bitcoin ethereum narrative for all these years look no further than all of the the, the people 99 percent of the crypto media will not even mention the eth gate when they know it's true all of them they all know it's true because the, the, we, all we ever did is put all the facts together into a timeline. Nobody's ever disputed that like John Deaton used to say. So I'm not saying this girl is one of those, but I am saying that most, not some, most of crypto media is that. Just as an, as a, as an example, and I'm not saying he is either, but what I am telling you, I've told my private group, Anthony Pompliano, do you know what he was before he became the Bitcoin uh, disciple. By the way, before we mention that, we know that he knew as of two, late 2017 that if you, he, he did a tweet, if you think Bitcoin did something, wait till you see Ripple XRP, and then all of a sudden he stopped talking about that. Do you know what Anthony Pompliano's background is? You know where he came from before he happened to show up and become a Bitcoin disciple? That's right. He was military intelligence. Look it up. You don't have to take my word for it. 
So now, when I see, I know that CNBC carries the narrative for the powers that be, and I also know that every chance they get, they took a little break after he did his stupid pizza box thing. But but they after their break, they went right back to putting Anthony Pompliano on. Every chance they get, it's always a Bitcoin maxi so that they can keep this narrative going. That's why my antenna has always been up. So listen to what he said. I guess this is today. Black Squawk Box, take a look at Bitcoin prices this morning. We're just hovering under $70,000 right about now. This month, expected to bring the next Bitcoin halving in which the reward for mining cryptocurrencies drops by half. Joining us right now on All Things Crypto, Anthony Pompliano, a Pomp Investment founder, of course, and partner. Good morning to you. We, we were trying to figure out, on one end, it's like a risk-on situation. On the other, it's arguably supposed to be a hedge, and, and it's very hard for me to get around the idea that it's both, though yeah. maybe you have a view that... This is a very important segment to listen to, folks. Is Then there was the having that's coming, so that's sort of an idiosyncratic one piece of the puzzle, but not something that's like an ongoing piece, so you could argue it is in certain ways. And then you have the ETF, which was also sort of an idiosyncratic moment in time. So sort of... So put that puzzle together for us. Yeah, Bitcoin is the most exciting asset in financial markets because of what you just described. It's this highly complex thing that everyone's trying to figure out. And I think for some people it is a risk on asset and for other people it is a hedge against inflation or a store of value. And so if we just look at- Can it data, be both? Of course, it can be different things to different people, right? Right now, I think what, one of the most interesting parts about this is if you go and you talk to someone on Wall Street, why are they buying it? They're buying it because they want the price exposure via the ETFs. But if you go and you talk to someone maybe in a country where they actually are worried about somebody seizing their assets, they're buying Bitcoin because they literally want to make sure that they can hold on to the economic value. And so you have an asset that this is not unique just to Bitcoin in the sense of some assets serve different purposes for different people. I think Bitcoin, because of its global nature, because of the decentralization, and because it was adopted by individuals before the institutions, we're just seeing it kind of uh, exaggerated um, as we watch the asset become adopted. Now, we just hit a really important milestone before the halving. We just had the highest weekly, monthly, and quarterly close for Bitcoin. Right. And so the last four times that that's happened, Bitcoin has appreciated at least 300% through the rest of the bull market. Right. Doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but to have that happen before the halving, it's kind of right. like the demand shock happened. Now we're going to have the supply shock. Right. And so it's hard just to see how the prices right. continue to go up. I want to ask you this question, and it goes to this, the risk on versus the inflation hedge. So I just got back from... Listen to what he says here. This is Andrew Ross Sorkin going around the world. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I literally asked everybody who was around when I was in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, by the way, the, the RAND has done terribly. It's right? it been inflated away, horrific situation. And I would ask anybody who was around, uh, very wealthy people, uh, uh, folk, folks who are middle class, uh, folks who are at the bottom of this, and I said, do you own any Bitcoin? Yeah. Almost to a T, they said no. That, that, that actually was not a thing. And this was, and by the way, this was, I mean, it wasn't a scientific study, but, a lot of people I asked about Bitcoin because yeah. I thought that the conversation we have around this table is that mm -hmm. somehow the unbanked and everybody who's in these countries that uh, is, is struggling with inflation is buying Bitcoin. Yeah. And they're at least from what I saw, they're not. And when then I went. Now, I'll tell you again, I've told you many times. Now you're going to see the truth. This is a guy named Gerald Salente with Lynette Zhang. Lynette Zhang, by the way, We'll be at XRP Las Vegas. Those tickets are flying off the shelf. There's a, I think there's some general admission left. The VIP is sold out. If you if you were ever going to get your tickets, you you might be running out of time here. So go. They're all the links are all in the description of this. And if you're in my daixrp.com group, at the top there's a discount to get your tickets. So you better hurry now. What do I believe Bitcoin is? I believe, I, I don't believe, there's not a doubt in my mind at this point. I believe the, the, the government or a combination of governments created Bitcoin. I don't think it's a coincidence that they put it out in the, in the financial crisis. I think they put it out then because they were worried about people hitting the exits from the economy because they lost faith like I did in the economy because they witnessed their government bailing out their friends and, and I think that they initiated a plan that had been on the shelf for many years during that time. I think they intentionally wrote in the Bitcoin code 
the uh, a reference to the bailouts to to give it a libertarian feel so that the people they wanted to when they hit the exits they would go into this thing instead of physical gold and silver and precious metals listen to what they say here all you have to go back is to the uh, jp morgan gang and what are they convicted of five felonies and one of them is rigging the gold and silver, the precious metals market. They paid the grand total of $900 million for rigging the markets. Nine, nothing, no money at all considering what they did in rigging the precious metals market. So yeah, the government doesn't want to see the prices of gold and silver go up because that makes it a realization of how bad the economy is. So of course I believe they're rigging it. And also, if Bitcoin wasn't there, the price right. of both precious metals would be a lot higher. And the reason a lot of people are buying Bitcoin is because you're seeing around the world economies going to crap, like Argentina with an inflation rate of, what, 250, 240%. So the people can't afford to buy gold as soon as they're buying tiny bits of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. That's what's driving the price up. I will never count on Wall Street to tell me the true fundamental value of either one of those assets. Uh, silver still has yet to complete its its cup formation, and uh, you know it, it's completely illogical when you look at the fact that silver gets used up and the number of paper contracts to physical and all of that. I mean, it's clearly going to continue to be manipulated. But I just did this calculation the other day, and I hadn't done it in a really long time. And to find out what is the fundamental value of an ounce of gold and an ounce of silver. So I'm about to sound outrageous, but probably like somebody telling somebody someday, you know, back in 1900, that, that at some point that one ounce gold coin was going to be at you know, 2,200 bucks or wherever it happens to be at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold, if they were due to do the overnight reset today, well, or last week when I did this calculation, and they were to do it at a one-to-one -one ratio, which they won't, but if they were, the fundamental value of gold is over $40,000 an ounce. Wow. All right. Now, <clears throat> I believe that, that they're using this, the, are, use, they, they, they created Bitcoin as a tool to funnel all of that fear and inflation into Bitcoin. And, and that's why I think they did the ETFs, is to ma maintain a certain control over it. I believe that after a reset, um, when everybody finally realizes that it was really about gold, not Bitcoin, gold and precious metals and commodities, and not really about Bitcoin. I, I believe that at that time, they're either going to, uh, and, and that'll also come in conjunction with the creation of CBDCs. And my, my question has always been, because they'll be able to do whatever they want to do. At, at, at that point, when there is a reset and they, and they have their CBDCs and all that's in place, do they destroy Bitcoin or do they let it live? I own a little bit of Bitcoin on the on the uh, the uh, the hope. I hope they let it live. I want them to let it continue. And maybe that was the uh, maybe it was just their way of throwing a bone to the public. Give them this tiny little private um, cryptocurrency that they can focus their money in so that there's not outrage when the reset happens. I don't know. But the point is, is that it's always been about gold, folks. It's always been about gold. And there's a reason the central bankers are accumulating gold. They're not accumulating Bitcoin. There's a reason Andrew Ross Sorkin is going around the country or around the world and hearing, well, no, we don't own Bitcoin. But you mentioned gold. They'll, they'll own some gold. There's a reason that we're, our attention is being drawn towards this. I'll bet you money that they, they sit at these people that designed all this. They sit in rooms and they laugh and, and they joke about Bitcoin being fool's gold. It's like virtual fool's gold that they created. I mean, I'm just telling you. The digital, I'm going to say it again. The digital assets, Brad Garlinghouse has said it a thousand times. The digital assets 
that are going to be a thing are the ones with utility. He said it over and over and over and over. No utility, no real value. That does not mean they're not going to let Bitcoin live. But I am telling you, my this has all come together in my mind. And there's not a question about what they're trying to do. Um, and these are the type of things that they keep pumping out. I'm not going to show this because it's not that. It's just a... It's a guy who um, had a chance at 50,000 Bitcoin or a two-bedroom apartment, I think, in New York in 2015. His Bitcoin would have been worth $3.4 billion. Look at Credible Crypto. I made a mistake here. I was looking at a fully diluted valuation for XRP. Reality is, at current circulating supply, a $10,000 ETH is the equivalent of a $20 XRP. So if you think $10 is impossible for XRP, but $10,000... ETH is realistic uh, for ETH, you need to check your bias real quick. Both are top 10 coins in the space, which means as much as, as you may not like XRP, the market clearly does. And then he's got another one here where this guy says XRP deserves to be permanently knocked out of the top 10. He says it deserves what the market thinks it deserves, not what you or I think it deserves. The market has believed it deserves to be a top 10 coin no matter what has happened to it, no matter the lawsuits, the SEC lawsuit, the FUD, the lies, the uh, pundits going on, the paid for pundits going on CNBC and bragging about shorting XRP, you name it, it's stayed in the top 10. Deserves to be in the top 10 coin in this space since its literal inception and not even the SEC and their failed attack could derail that. It's because the smart people know. XRP Bitcoin falling wedge. The rebound from falling wedge could mark monumental shift in momentum. It's poised for significant upsurge, signaling a strong buy opportunity. Stay steady. Price stock target $4. Look at him. Um, then we had this. Now, I, I did a crypto. I even looked up the emergency police code for police emergency. It's code 1033 because I wanted to make the crypto police aware that Jimmy Valley was doing something he's not allowed to do. He was talking about his XRP valuation. And the problem with his XRP valuation is, to my knowledge, the only sanctioned XRP valuation models have been the ones done by Susan Athey and Robbie Mitchnick. Susan Athey, Athey was on Ripple's board. And then Robbie Mitchnick was at Ripple and then left to go head digital assets at BlackRock. But that is the only crypto police, crypto Gestapo sanctioned XRP fundamental valuation. Nobody else is allowed to do one. And so I was making them aware that this is a code red calling all cars initiate Operation X spaces immediately. And what that means is do what you do best, crypto police, go in, immediately start some X spaces and spend all day talking bad about people like Jimmy Valley. And so I wanted to make sure we gave the right red alert and made them all aware of what was going on so that they could go into a spaces and try to dictate what people can and can't talk about, who's allowed to say what and what's, what's true and what's not true and all of that. So I, I try to do my best to do my duty to get the word out when these things are going on because God forbid if we allowed someone who is unsanctioned to give their opinion of a valuation on XRP, it would be devastating. Here's Jimmy Valley. I gave all the proper disclaimers, crypto police. You, I can now play this. I'm, I'm assuming that I am now sanctioned to play this now that I've given, given all the proper disclaimers. We uh, later pulled together a group of uh, investment bankers and accountants and financial professionals and did what, to my knowledge, is uh, the only effort that's been done for digital assets at all, which we did a comprehensive approach in terms of fair market value of XRP, where we basically took all the traditional types of valuation metrics like discounted cash flows, collateralization models, we ended up having a uh, um, a biologist from South Africa get involved in this who came up with like an ecosystem uh, uh, model that actually, this one's most fascinating, it's Dr. Dion Backus. Um, when you took his, his 
inputs to his model and actually put in the volume and the pricing and stuff like that that it was happening. This is like in February of 23, I think. It actually did spit out the exact price of XRP. So his model kind of among the group was, was the most validated. But we published this in, uh, I think, the summer of last year, and this has gotten us tons of notoriety and doors open, a lot of criticism. Uh, but out of this, we ended up developing a relationship with Cornell Tech, which is kind of a master's program for, for Cornell. Um, we worked with some of their graduate students to come up with technology that could do uh, valuations of digital assets, so that was a fun project developed a relationship with the Digital Asset Innovation Council out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, basically one of the, the founding members of that industry group. It's like a Texas blockchain council type. Okay, we're going to go into DAI XRP. I've got so much more left that I wanted to go over. So we're going to go into DAIXRP.com to talk about it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. The first thing in the group, right off the bat, there's more voodoo subjects. This could get the ire of the crypto police too, but I'm gonna show this one in the group. So maybe the tweeter of this will be protected. Here we go. 